All right, Shabbat Shalom. As we normally do, this we'll read a few scriptures and then we'll get a conclusion at the end. So if we can first start with Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. I'll give everybody a moment. Romans 15, verse 4. <clears throat> for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our instruction, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So now let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 1. First Corinthians 10 verse 1 reads, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all immersed unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual food and they did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Mashiach. But many of them, Yah was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be you idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Mashiach as some of them also tempted Yah and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So as I first started, as we we have the written examples of what they did and what they did not do. They didn't necessarily have the example, but we have the written copy. So we have somewhat of an advantage. So a question that we should all think about is, have you ever taken a test where you had all the answers and still didn't pass it? <laughs> you know, so open book test. So that's kind of what we have in front of us. We have the examples, we have the written examples. And we have to ask ourselves, are we failing the open book test? And that's something that we should all meditate on. And with that, you know, that's, I'll yield with that, you know, how we are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, that was a good, that was a good analogy, good year. Um, and Mishra, I really think about that, you know, um, and I will just share, I've taken a lot of open book tests and when you take it on these jobs and so on and so forth or whatever you're dealing with in life, you may think open book tests mean you're gonna get every answer right, but you have a time limit. So you don't even have time to get to all the pages to find the answers. So if you don't even know how to navigate through the Torah, through the scriptures anyway, then the open book still ain't gonna do you any good if you don't familiarize yourself with the book or with the text to even know how to get to the subject matter. So. That was a very good warning, but we need to be going to the manual because it's open before so that we can start to pass the test. So great warning, great warning, brief and to the point. That was a bullseye, Don. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All praise and honesty be to the most high. All right, Mr. Bukai, this time we're going to uh, open the floor for halal ya moments for praise. I'm going to open it to the floor, uh, to the floor first that's online. And then, you know, I get a, a couple of you from online and then we'll send up a couple of songs in the room and then we go into the word. So if there's anyone that has any praise on their heart, you know, or uh, to send up before the most high, we now open the floor.
All right, Bat Zion. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, again, I want to give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High Yah, who is a provider um, in a time of need. And um, my testimony is that, um, and I have a song, it's an English song though. Um, but my testimony is that we came back from, um, from uh, Pesach and Yah has been providing and intimate, intimately, you know, not in the way that the world would think. Um, for instance, you know, I came home and um, on the trip back, I was thinking about, you know, I'm in my finals week. This is, it's really a lot of stuff going on, but I also have, um, you know, got to get started in the garden. I was going to get the front, you know, all these things I'm thinking about as I'm returning home away from the set apart day, set apart week, set apart feast. Um, and my mom surprised me with setting up my prayer room with prayer quotes, you know, putting um, um, some, like setting up the front house with beautiful trees and bushes and herbs. And, and I didn't tell her these things. These were on my own personal thoughts of what, um, what I was talking to y'all about, you know, like, this is what I need to do. And I'm kind of like, oh, I mean, I gotta wait till payday because, you know, this is an expensive trip. And then for all this stuff to happen um, was, was step one. <laughs> then step two, you know, um, we have chickens. Our chickens lay colorful eggs. And um, my mom had collected all of the eggs, but she hadn't used it. So we had an abundance of eggs. Um, I saw a neighbor um, a going outside um, and I said hey do you want some some eggs and she was like yeah so I go and I give her a whole bunch of these chicken eggs um, and I'm telling her you know you don't have to put it in the refrigerator because you know they're fresh you can keep them out they sat in a third um, mind you again like I said we, we're we're uh uh, we, we're pinched right now, <laughs> you know, um, but but still being provided for. I gave this lady, my neighbor, these eggs and expecting nothing in return, nothing in return. Um, and I'm in the middle of my, and I'm sorry, um, I'm taking a while, but I just want to give praise to y'all and also like show people y'all is a provider. Um, I was really beat down that day, you know, um, realizing that I have two weeks to do two months worth of work in order to like get my MBA because I miscalculated something. And he showed up. Not only did I get it done, I, I got an A in that class. What? You know, but I was beat up and I'm coming out and I'm, you know, crying out to my to my Ish and he's comforting me. And then I look out the window and my neighbor's walking through our yard with a, with a, um, with a, a, a Tupperware box. And she knocks on the door. My hair's a mess. So I go and cover my head real quick. I go and answer the door. And she was like, you know, thank you so much for the eggs. They were delicious. I made you some, some fresh cookies with them. Um, and I about cried <laughs> because once I got the cookies and I was walking in, I heard, you you poured into me by keeping my feast days and keeping my commandments. You don't think I'm going to take care of you? And at that moment, I'm, I'm going to take what you gave and I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to make more from it. And at that moment, I just knew everything was going to be okay. And so um, I have a song that I want to uh, give up to our, our father, who is a provider, who um, in times of trouble, uh, call me, you know, um, in my in, in my prayer room that my mom uh, made for me. And so um, I'm praying that I can get through this because it is so, I'm so humbled for the provisions of our father. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> There is a quiet place far from the rapid pace 
where you can soothe my troubled mind, sheltered by tree and flower, in my quiet hour with him, where I can. Whether a garden small or on a mountain tall, new strength and courage. In this quiet place, I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Thank you for the testimony and for displaying praise of y'all with your whole heart. All praise and esteem be to the most high. Hallelujah. Adon Michael. Hallelujah, most high. Um, hallelujah, a Koti Um, I'm just gonna land back on uh y'all being a provider, like Batzion said. Um I remember my first year in, I spoke with Moray and he was encouraging me about some things. And I began to ask him about the Sabbath. And in my heart, I just really wanted to keep the Sabbath. I just really wanted to. And um, he shared with me, you know, how some people, you know, they have to do what they have to do. But every time I would go to work, I would just feel so bad. And I, I knew I needed to find another job. And I was asking the most high. I was saying, most high, the job that you give me, please open the door so I can have the Sabbath off. And um, I knew that if I had the Sabbath off, I would stop coaching as much as I was coaching. And so the new job that the most high eventually opened up, there, I had several interviews, but none of them were going to be where I had the Sabbath off, but they were great positions. But the job I ended up getting immediately, that was the first thing I asked them about when they said that I was hired. I said, I need Fridays off. I need from this time to this time off. I need the Sabbath off. And he was like, no problem. No problem at all. And then it worked out so well where I actually worked from home. I actually literally worked from home. They sent me my laptop, my phone for the company, my printer, everything. But then it, the top it off is even I still get the coach a couple of days during the week, but I told him I don't, I'm not working. I stepped down from the team. I used to coach a female gymnastics team. I stepped down from the team. And so I'm just excited that the most high has provided that for me. This is just amazing. And the last two Sabbaths, I've just been in the kitchen, cooking and preparing my meals for Shabbat and just enjoying the most high. So I am just grateful. I'm just so grateful. And I just want to give praise to the most high for, as Batsion saying, definitely being a mighty provider and opening up a way when I didn't even understand how it would come. I just couldn't see it, but he did it. And so I say all praises to you, Yahuwah, and all glory and esteem be to you. I yield. Hallelujah. All, honor, all esteem be to the most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Shashamar. 
Vasu no Subasu no Pace to the Most High. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you know, um, recently I was uh, just meditating on some scripture. When I was at work, uh, the Most High led me to the book of Daniel or Daniel. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what was in there for me to see. So I was listening to it when I was on the job. And it's about 12 chapters. And when I was listening to it, one thing that I noticed is that, you know, Danielle and, you know, the Hebrew boys, you know, Hanani, Mishael, and Zaria, they were, they were in captivity, but in their captivity, the most high, he, he was still with them. He was, he was still with them and they were still blessed. And although, you know, they were still, you know, given different names, from you know the powers to be during that time, they were still being afflicted, but they they were still blessed, and they were still blessed to the point where they were outshining those who were not observing the Torah, those who were not following the Most High. And I was basically comparing that to my situation in this caption. You know, I'm at my job, and I do. There's some things you know that I can still do, but it's more that I want to do, but I can't do it because of the situation that I'm in. So. Like I said, it's 12 chapters, you know, I'm going to continue to meditate on it, but it gave me motivation, you know, because the affairs of this life, it can't wear the mind and body out. But um, another thing I took from that chapter, you know, just continue to have faith in the most high, you know, even when, you know, things of this world, you know, starts to cave in, you know, just continue to have faith in the most high, even in the midst of captivity, the most high can still use his people, you know, he can still use, you know, me, us, you know, so that his name could be extinct. And another thing that I thought about um, in that chapter, you know, being in this captivity is not an excuse, you know, not to seek the most high. Because in that chapter, you know, Daniel, he had an opportunity to eat the king's food, you know, but he still, you know, decided to keep his heart set apart for the most high, yeah. So captivity is not an excuse to not serve the most high either. So that's another thing that I pull from that. But I just give all praise to the Most High for putting that on my left, my heart. And I just want to give you know, this praise to the Most High for life, uh, strength, and all the things that he has done for me. And I was, you know, just thinking back at all the things. The Most High has brought me through a lot of situations. You know, he's continuing to work on me. You know, I don't count it as a light thing. So all praise to the Most High, Yah, for this Shabbat, total about for my life and our lives. How you? Yeah, total, yeah, yeah. Koti Stephanie. Hallelujah. I just want to praise y'all. I thank I thank y'all for my cousin. Is I'm saying it right? I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm not good with that. Just call me yet. by my name, cuz. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm so I was over here just so touched. I'm so happy. I was thinking about my uncle Riley as well, about how you came home and auntie had your prayer room set up. So I look at everything as hope. So I think, I think, cause I, I know my uncle be so happy to see us. So it just touches me just to know my uncle heart for his family and to see us coming in and my Aunt Marsha be up here and stuff like that, just for us to be as a family here. So I, I pray job is just touch. I know my uncle was touched. I know he was. And to know how to feel that love there, I thank God for that. I think that, that he showed, even though I always wanted to be shown love, but through my uncle, even though we don't say, we don't see each other like, and all that stuff, I know he loves us. And he just gives me a smile on my face when I know he, I can feel the love and the excitement that he had when we get something or we coming through like my son showing up. And I know when I first started here, I know y'all heard my little Tim always crying and felt like about that. But this time I can truly rejoice and say, um, the past is over. I'm free. I'm learning the instructions of the Most High. I'm enjoying it. I love this, keeping the Sabbath. I love finding out things. I'm just so excited about there's a change now. I see the change. There's freedom. There's liberty. And because he has truly set me free because I'm truly getting it. I'm truly getting the truth. And I've been blessed being connected to this connected is i'm saying it right i hope i'm saying it more right everybody i hope i'm saying everything right <laughs> more right i hope i'm saying everything but i thank and praise y'all for all of you and i yield 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise the most high for you. And don't worry about how you're saying it, sister. We hear the love in your heart. So hallelujah, hallelujah. It all comes with time. All oh, praise be to the most high. Barack is called our name. And Ima Shoshana with her little late hand. You done inspired her, uh, Coach Stephanie. You done inspired Ima. Come on, Ima Shoshana. <laughs> <laughs> it was not just her. It was all of them. It, it's the joy. I get joy when I think about what he what done, he's done for, me. for me. I give joy when I think about what he what done he's done for me. me. I get joy when I think about what he's what done he's for, done me. for me. I get joy, 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 what he's done for me. I get peace when I think about what he's done for me. I get peace when I think about what he's done for me. I get peace when I think about what he's done for me. I get peace, 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 peace. What is the for me? I get joy when I think of that. What is the for me? I get joy, 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 joy. What is the for me? I get joy when I think of that. What is the for me? I get Yeah. 
I'm going to ask you to do the opening Tefala of the day. Come on, brother. If you can do the opening Tefala. Uh, hey, sleeve in a dome. Uh, you know you got the camo. Teflon by Dom. Kanaka, Kanaka. Abiyah, creator of the heavens and the earth, we give you thanks for this day that you have given us. Your Sabbath day, Abba. We ask that you will give rest into your people, Abba. Rest in their bodies, rest in their minds. We ask that you will use your minister, Abba, words my Abba, to bring forth your words, Abba, as you have them to bring forth. We ask that you will open the hearts, the minds, the ears of the people, Abba, to receive the words that you have given us through him, Abba, that the seeds may be planted within us and watered within us, but that you will get the increase. We ask, Abba, that you will continue to bless all those throughout the four corners of the earth who are potentially seeking you, Abba, that you will be a light into their path, Abba, give them the things that they, ha they have need of, Abba. For you know all these things even before we ask. We ask that your will be done in our lives, Abba, that we may be as righteous examples in the earth, Abba, but those who may not believe, Abba, that we can be a nation of kings and priests and a light to the nations that you have called Israel to be. We ask, Abba, in the name of your Abba, Shiach, Abba, your sent one. Blessed be Yahuwah, who on earth. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah, who on earth. And blessed who comes in the name of Yahuwah, who on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say Shabbat, which means be seated. Test, test, test. Am I clear without the mic? Or is it better with the mic? Better with the mic? With the mic? Okay, let me turn up a little bit. 
I can't really hear it from back here because I'm behind you. How does it sound? That's good right there? All right. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Picard. Give all praise and honor and esteem to the Most High. As I can, y'all clap. Am I loud and clear online? Can you hear me clearly? Can you already loud and clear? All right. Told that, told that, yeah. Told that, yeah. Told that as I can. All right, Mr. Picard. We're going to um, be going into a lesson today. But before we go into and get started with the lesson for the day, um, I have a question, um, a question for you, or maybe, you know, a few questions for you, okay? And for those who may be listening in online, you know, um, please, uh, if you would be attentive to the lesson and when you hear something that might sound conflicting to your, your viewpoint as it may be today, just please give us an opportunity to let the word speak and let the Ruach move in all of us. So the question that I have is, one of the questions that I have is, do you believe that Christians have a different God than you have, or they're praying to a different God than you? So the question is, do you believe that Christians have a different God or are praying to a different God than you are? It's just a question. Just think about it. I'm going to give you some of the answers that I see online. I'm going to give you some of the answers that I see from our community. We always want to say that they're praying to a false God. Or we always want to say that they are talking to another God and it differs from the God that we are praying to, right? So let me see, I see some lines coming up in the chat. I have a yes in the chat, all right? Okay, then we have a yes, but I don't think they mean it. I have a yes and no. <laughs> so we have, these are some good answers, you know what I'm saying? So it said we have a yes, we have a yes, but I don't think they mean to. We have a yes and no, we have another yes. All right, praise be to the most high. We have some good answers. So the thing is, do you believe that before you came to this truth, you were praying to a false God? No. no. <laughs> and if uh, Shah says that Shaitan does not cast out Shaitan, then who brought you to the truth while you were seeking the most high and trying to call on the most high? So as the answer is yes and no, and then there's an answer to yes, but I don't think they mean it, meaning that there's ways of worship and traditions and culture that they have in their now culture that they've been trained in that have added things, which is leaven, and we know that a little leaven does what? Leavens a whole lump. They have them thinking that they're calling on the creator who in their heart, they're really trying to call on the Elohim or commonly called the God of heaven, right? But the adversary has added so many false doctrines that they're only going to the church houses trying to receive the information about whom they commonly call God, right? So if you're reading from your Bible, and before you all got y'all Hebraic Bibles, the Hallelujah Scriptures, the Scriptures Version, the Ed Safar, what did you start with? Possibly a KJV sometimes. And then it had the words such as the Lord substituted for the name of the Most High. But the rest of the text was still what? It was still the same. They just substituted his name with the Lord. The same way a lot of people have an issue with Paul's writings. People have an issue with Paul's writings because many Christians have lied on Paul. They've lied on Paul. Paul said this, Paul said this, Paul didn't say none of that. You misinterpreted what he was saying. Because he was speaking to his brothers who was Hebrews, right? So then the next question I'll have for you is, do you believe that the Muslims pray to a different God than you? So I had a no in the house, I got a head shake in the back, and I got a yes in the house. And I got the Yaladim shaking the head like real heavy in the building. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we have created so many divisions by where we differ and by what we think we know according to the word of the most high and we have now alienated and we've separated people and they don't even want to receive truth from us because the way we deliver it a senate spoken out of season can be detrimental tone of voice attitude or the way in which you deliver a message can come off wrong so if you tell a person outright Oh, you worshiping a false god. Anything else you say to them beyond that point, they're not going to hear from you. If you're supposed to be a witness to introduce them to the true most high, then as Adom said, we have things that are written a four times that are written for our learning. 
when Paul and some of the disciples went to them and said, now, who is it y'all praying to? Let me now introduce you to the true and living Elohim. He didn't just go and say, oh, y'all pagans. Like you, they say sometimes, yeah, you worship, you know not what you worship, but we know what we worship. So let us teach you the proper way of worship without just what? Downing someone, right? And I know we might lose some views for this, but we have to learn to hear the lesson. So I'm just making statements right now. I have not even given a yes or no answer. I'm just saying, are we being effective servants and witnesses? If we are Hebrew Israelites, shouldn't we want to see all Hebrew Israelites say? <laughs> well, what do we do? We damn them to hell. I'm going to say it a little strong today. We round damning everybody. You got damnation. Y'all worship false God. All we do is judge, judge, judge. And in the culture study today, all praise been to the most high, as well as the two minute warning, all praise been to the most high. I love it when a plan comes together. Zakane started asking, Who is Israel? What is Israel? And he went to the text and it said that Israel is supposed to be a peculiar people, a special unto the most high. And they're also supposed to be what? A nation of priests. Yes, priests do tell you what is unclean, and they're going to point that out. But there should still be a way a priest or a nation of priests ministers well-being to others. And not with all the anger, the finger pointing, and the looking down on someone because we get a little knowledge, and we still do not yet have true knowledge of self. Don't even know what we're created for and the purpose of being Israel. Most people think Israel is a bragging right, and I'm happy to know that I'm an Israelite. It's a duty and a responsibility that comes with being Israel, and that is to esteem the name of Yah. You can actually esteem the name of Yah without always trying to tear someone else down first. Ima Audrey shared last night about just her cousin being present with her, see how she moves and how she dresses, and her cousin is now what? Started acclimating to being like Ima in style of dress. That's ministry. Ministry is not always what you say. It's what you do, how you live. People will see the blessings that you have. They will hear the testimonies of Abba Zion. They say, look, hey, we might have been a little short here there, but man, the Most High blessed us. They want to didn't ask her, well, sister, what are you doing to be blessed? I see your discipline. I see how you praise the Most High. Can you teach me how the Most High? If they can see that side first, then they would then do what? Be able to receive the Most High from you. Right? So the reason why I ask that question is because we have gotten so good at looking at everyone else that we never really look in the mirror. And the mirror that I'm talking about is not even your physical mirror on the wall. I'm talking about this book that the brother <laughs> gave a two minute warning about. We have an open book test and we still fail at Mishmaka. Because we're not even looking in the mirror to see that a lot of the woe that was spoken in the text was spoken to who? Israelites. Right? So before we go into the uh, to the Torah tonight, let's start off in the book of Romans, chapter ten. Romans ten, and start with verse one. Once you get it, okay. It is time for us to truly understand who we are and our purpose, and the way we're to reach y'all's people. All right. Romans ten, verse one. Truly, brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to him for Israel is for deliverance. And in the KJV, it said that they all may be saved. So this is Shaul speaking on behalf of his brethren. Truly, brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for Israel is for deliverance of all Israel to be saved. So if people really see your mannerisms like you always just coming at them negatively, do they really want you praying for them? Or really, when you see the way some brothers are actually talking against other brothers who don't believe the same way they do, do you even think they're even praying for one another? The way you talk to me and the way you treat me and the way you are rebuking me without even knowing me, without even showing a true heart of a servant, I tell you, you ain't praying for me. Because when we go to the mirror now, you go to the book, you start seeing how they did things. The way Yahusha, he didn't just come and, and condemn everybody. He came and showed them the way, right? So it says, truly, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for Yisrael is for deliverance so that they all be saved. So what we should be praying is that Israel can be saved, and that the Most High give us the proper wording, 
the proper ruach of the spirit, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the proper timing as how to deliver his word to everyone. She's too far away from me. She's too far away from me. She can fall. Okay. Read on to verse 2. For I bear them witness that they have an ardor for Elohim, but not according to knowledge. So it says, For I bear them witness or record that they have an ardor, or in the KJV says a zeal for Elohim, but not according to what? Not according to knowledge. So what is he saying? If we look at what he's saying, he's saying, look, I can see and I can tell that these brothers that I'm praying for, they really have an ardour or a zeal. If you look those two words up, zeal or ardour, it's going to say an enthusiasm or a passion or a desire to the Most High. He didn't say they serve a different God to me and they, uh, they serve a pagan God and the God they serve is not the same as me. What did he just say? My heart's desire for all Israel to be saved. For I bear them witness or record that they have a door for Elohim. They have an enthusiasm, a passion, and a desire to Elohim, but not according to knowledge. Why we don't have like that today? Why, why are we who are so smart and we can understand that we know that they put Lord in some place, but the only thing we can always say is, you know Lord is Baal? Well, you know Baal also is referred to, to a man that's a husband? That's just Baal simply means Lord in Hebrew? Do you know that the men, I ain't going all the way there because it's more or less is coming down the line. So yes, Baal can be used as a name as to a false one, but the title Adon or Adonai, which is Lord, and Baal can also mean what? Lord or master. And there's a place where the Most High said, you should call me no more Baali, but call me Ishi. So you should no longer call me my Lord, but you should call me what? My husband, my Ish. So we ourselves do not even have enough knowledge of the word with the way we apply it when we go to others. The term Lord is not a negative all the time. It's a term of authority. All right. So, yes, we understand that they put into the text the term the Lord. But because someone says, well, I pray the Lord bless you. Don't come and do me that paganism. No, they have a desire and a zeal and enthusiasm to the creator of heaven and earth. You hear them say that? They read the Ten Commandments. <laughs> huh? They're reading from the book that we all read from, but now we have our Hebraic versions. And people used to ask me, where can I get a version of the Bible like you have? I'm like, you already have one. They said, no, because mine don't sell them Hebrew names and words. I said, mine don't either. I just know that where the Lord is, it's the name of the Most High. If it's Lord case, it's Adonai. And these pagan names or these Gentile names that they're now given or these translated names, I just go back to using the Hebrew terms. Because I now have knowledge of what's originally there. My Bible is still the same as yours. So if you have enough knowledge to know these substitutions took place, you still understand and know that the word itself, what? It's still the actual word. So they have a zeal and enthusiasm. The fact they're reading their word, they're taking a the time out and they're trying to praise the most high. We need to be aware of how we present things to them. We now need to have this exact knowledge ourselves that, hey, we understand you have a zeal, an enthusiasm, a passion, or do it to the most high, just not according to knowledge. Okay? This is what Shaul is saying. Read on, Akeem. <clears throat> For not knowing the righteousness of Elohim and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of Elohim. For not knowing the righteousness of Elohim and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not subject or submit themselves to the righteousness of Elohim. Why did they say they did not do this? Because they didn't know. They didn't know. There was a time, Mishmachah, that's in our Knesset, and anyone that's listening online, and for the grumpy ones that's listening online also, there was a time you didn't know. There was a time you didn't know. And the Most High woke us up. Hallelujah. So we are a type of first fruit. So then we have a responsibility. We need to get this information and then go back and present it to others, not in a way we're speaking condescending, but that we encourage it and we're using scriptural text and wisdom that's already written. Hey, I understand you have a zeal, but not according to knowledge because you didn't know you went about to establish your own righteousness, but you have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of Elohim. 
So if you continue this way after having it received knowledge of truth, now you may be referencing a false one. Because the Torah says the Most High winks at us when? In our ignorance. So in ignorance, the Most High is winking. But once you have knowledge of, now you know what you're doing, right? You're not going to be protected anymore. Y'all remember the lesson from last week, right? Yes. Praise be to the Most High. Give me a little bit more on that, Aki. Verse 4. For Messiah is the end, is the goal of the Torah unto righteousness to everyone that believes. Read on. For Moshe writes about this righteousness, which is of the Torah. The man who does these shall live by them. So here's another one. When they use this from their theological view and, and the church view, they use to say the laws are done away with. But let's read this. It says, it already established that y'all have not known the righteousness of Elohim and you try to establish your own way. So that's what's happened. We have to be able to show the people that they've established their own righteousness but have not submitted to the righteousness of Yah. He says, for Messiah is the goal, the point aimed for. And the KJV is gonna have the word what? In there. So the law is over, the law is over. No, it's the word telos that's written and in the Greek that word means goal. It's the point that you're aiming for. So the Messiah is the goal or the point that you aim for of the Torah unto righteousness to everyone who believes for Moshe or Moses. So now it's giving you a reflection on what this righteousness looks like. For Moshe or Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the Torah, the man who does these shall live by them. So it says that Moshe or Moses had already, so everybody wanna talk about Paul spoke against the Torah, right? He just quoted Torah and he referenced who? Moshe, the deliverer who delivered Israel out of Mitzrayim, out of bondage the first time. And it said he spoke of the righteousness which is written in the Torah that the man who does them shall do what? Live by them. When you're taught in error from KJV, modern Christianity perspective, you think that it's saying you don't have to do the laws and you live by them by just living in faith. No, it's, he quoted exactly where it comes from. Moshe said, they that do these shall live by them, meaning what? If you do the Torah, you shall what? You shall live. You need to have knowledge of this Torah. Hallelujah. So now let's drop that, Adon. And I want to take us someplace. Let's go to the book of Shemot. Chapter 32. So another question I have is, where does a lot of this not knowing begin? <laughs> Why is it that people don't have knowledge of Yah? Why are they worshiping the wrong way? When did it first start? Who does it first start with? So we're reading the word and we're coming out of Passover and Unleavened Bread. We've already understood that on the 15th day, the Most High delivered Israel from Egypt, saved them and brought them out. We read how they sung a song, and a month later they was what? Complaining. We've already covered that he brought them to the mount on the third month. And on the third month, when he brought them to the mount, he gave them his what? His instructions, his Torah, his laws, the knowledge that we need to have so that we have true knowledge of self because the Most High gives us the word that we should have. That they're lacking, that Shaul was saying in the Brick of Shah. They have a zeal, an adore, an enthusiasm, or a passion, or a desire towards the Creator, but not according to knowledge because they did not have this Torah, right? So he brought them there on the third month. We know Moshe went up to the mount for how long? 40 days or what? So that gives you at least another 30 days plus what? Another 30 days plus 10. So it's third month, they came to the mount. So that now puts you in like what? The fourth or fifth month, or should I actually say fifth, possibly sixth month, of being removed from Israel. And what happened? We're going to read. We're so quick to talk about everyone. Let's look in the mirror. Shemot, or Exodus chapter 32, start at verse 1. 
And when the people saw that Moshe was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to our own and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mizraim, we do not know what was become of him. And our own said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to our own. And he took this from their hand and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, This is your mighty one, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Mizraim. Oh. So who's the people that's being spoken of here? Israel. Right? Who is Israel speaking to that they're bringing the gold to that they're requesting another God from? Aaron. Aaron. Which is, what is Aaron? The priest, but more so specific. Which priest? What type priest? The highest of priests. <laughs> Four, five, six months later. The high priest is the one who introduced false gods back to the people. So what's different in the churches today? The people are going to try to worship the creator of heaven. And if where they're going does not have the knowledge of Elohim, are we actually saying they're serving a false god? As the answer was yes and no. Because if the customs and traditions do not line up with Yah, you're not serving Yah, and someone has tricked you into worshiping them, but as Bazion said, but I don't believe they mean to. Yes, but I don't believe they mean to. Their heart is towards the creator. They're going to learn of the creator, but the people that stand behind the pulpits to stand up on the altars are the ones that's lying to the people. So now they desire to create in their heart who they think they're calling upon. They don't know they've been instructed by a false one. But this was Israel, Ms. Ricard. So still understand that when we talk about Christians, and we talk about Muslims, so recklessly the way that we do, are they not still your brothers and sisters? Are they not still Israelites? Call it for you and continue to read it, all. Verse 5. <clears throat> and our own saw and built a slaughter place before it. And our own called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yah. And they rose early on the next day and offered. So, our own did what? He built it. And then he said, What? Tomorrow is a what? A festival to who? No, he didn't. He said Baal. He said Tammuz. He said who? He said under Yah. They done built these idols. You the high priest. And then you're going to tell the people that tomorrow is a festival to Yah. So who do people still think they're referencing? They just still have customs and traditions that they have not got used to letting go of yet. We need an idol to go with this. We still have the custom of Mitzrayim. Build us something. And you build and you still put the name of the creator on an idol and say, now this is a festival under Yah. So the people still feel like the deliverer who just brought them out, they still feel like they worship him while they've done what? Establish their own righteousness. Sit down and just be patient and wait for Moshe to come back with the instructions that the Most High is going to send unto y'all. But instead, y'all want to worship him. So y'all adore your zeal, your desire to a creator that you don't yet know properly. You desire to have an image that you can bow to. So what I want us to see, Mr. because sometimes the heart of the people is really they want to do what? Obedience to their creator. So they establish what they think is righteous and because it's been going on for so long because the institute that they are under have been teaching these false ways for so long, but their desire is really to the most high. They don't understand that it's not to the most high, but their desire is. And we have all been under that before. 
And still to this day, sometimes we are still until we gain more knowledge. So just want to bring it out again. So he said, tomorrow is a festival unto Yah. Who is this again? Was this Christians? No. Nope. Was this Muslims? Who is this? Israelites. And the highest of priests introducing falsehood to the people. Read on. Verse 6. And they rose early on the next day and offered ascending offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So basically we need something to be able to give back to Yah for what he's done to us. So we need you to create us mighty ones because we're accustomed to having something to look towards. So we want to give him thanks. So they're bringing their offerings now to something false that was created by the jewels that the Most High blessed you with. So they just want to give back. They've established their own righteousness. Yet they have knowledge of Elohim. So now in the Brit Kaddish Yahweh, Paul said his prayer is that Elohim and all Israel may be saved. But then you know, y'all have a zeal, an enthusiasm, a desire, and a door to the Most High, but not according to knowledge. This, what you're doing, is not correct. But he did it in a loving way, Mishmachai, in a loving manner. Read on, Aki. Y'all said to Moshe, go get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Mizraim have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a multi calf and have bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, this is your mighty one of Israel who brought you out of the land of Mizraim. Y'all said to Moshe, I have seen this people and see it is a stiff necked people. And now let me alone that my wrath might burn against them and I consume them, and I make of you a great nation. But Moshe pleaded. With Did what? Pleaded. <laughs> the Most High know what's going on. Moshe don't know what's going on. Y'all saying these stiff-necked people out here, they done built the molten calf. They done to act like they're giving something to me, but they're giving it to a molten calf, something I didn't tell them. To. I just brought them away from that mess. I'm going to destroy them, Moses. I'm going to raise up a new people under you. That's y'all's prerogative. Because I came asked the question <laughs> in the culture study, and I love it when a plan comes together. How you think you feel? How you think y'all feels when you ain't worshiping him the way he wants you to? When you're not doing the function that Israel is supposed to do to the Creator? So we can say he's sad, or we can also say something else. We can take that S letter off the front of that sad, and we put an M letter in front of that sad, and we have what? Mad. Angry. So he said he's going to destroy them, but he appointed Moshe to be over the people, and he said, You can be to them as what? As an Elohim. What did Moshe do? He pleaded with the Most High. Why am I going here? Do we look in the mirror? Do we look in the mirror? This was the first heart of Moshe was, Let me plead for my brothers and sisters. I don't just want to say they're wrong. Let me plead for them first. I will please don't do this. That's how we need to learn to be for our brothers and sisters. We need to intercede. We need to pray to the Most High that they may be delivered. We need to understand when we did not have knowledge, when we was in the same level of ignorance. We need to understand how we would receive from someone and how we would not receive from someone. If you're already talking down to me, I'm not really trying to hear what you got to say. We need to remember these things. But we also need to remember how our forefathers loved the people and how they made sure they delivered the word to the people, but also how they went to Yah on the behalf of the people. Read on. But Moshe pleaded with Yah his Elohim and said, Yah, why, do you, why does your wrath burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Mizraim with great power and with a strong hand? Why should the Mizraim speak and say, for evil he brought them out to kill them in the mountains? and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from the heat of your wrath and relent from this evil to your people. Remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I increase your seed like the stars of the heavens. And all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your seed and they shall inherit it forever. And Yah relented from the evil which he said he would do to his people. And Moshe turned and went down from the mountain, and in his hand were two tablets of the witness, 
tablets written on both their sides, written on the one and on the other. And the tablets were of the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. And Yehoshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, and he said to Moshe, a noise of battle in the camp. But he said, it is not the sound of those who shout for might, nor is it the sound of those who cry in weakness, out of, cry out in weakness, but the sound of seeing that I hear. And it came to be as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moshe's displeasure burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Oh, let's pause here for a second. So before Moshe seen all this, he was up there pleading for the people. He still loved the people. Then he heard all this noise. He said, it's like the sound of war. But he said, nah, but it's not like really war. It's like there's some joy going down. They going down the mountain. Then he see, what in the world is this? The people all dance around. They got that golden cap. We just got rid of that nonsense and they that something in the something for that time. Where my brother at? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how he thinking? I know my brother ain't letting this mess go. Your brother the one <laughs> went right along with it. But then what we see here also is that what? But Moshe also, now he's burning his displeasure for what he sees, right? Yeah. Now read on. Yeah. Verse 20. And he took the calf which he had made and burned it in the fire and ground it into powder and scattered it to the face of the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moshe said to Aaron, what did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And our own said, do not let the displeasure of my master burn. So he asked who? What did you do? What did the people do to allow you to bring this level of sin on the people? So again, how did idolatry get brought back into the camp? Who introduced it? The high priest. An Israelite. Not a Christian pastor. A high priest. And Moshe said, what in the world did the people say or do to you that would, you would allow this level of sin and you would introduce this level of sin? But we also seen that the most humble man we know in Moshe who just pleaded for the people. So here's a balance that we need to understand also, Mishmachai. The balance is that, yes, we need to tell people in love, but we do need to tear down and tell the people also. So these are people, when Moshe is speaking to the people, these are people he already know. Y'all already know. Y'all already understand because... Y'all was with me. Y'all heard all the commands I gave y'all. Y'all knew y'all was supposed to wait. Y'all moved on y'all own. That's a little different. So sometimes how I can talk to the members here, I'm not going to talk to people online that's new. Yeah. I'm not going to go on a Christian website or when it's Christmas time, that's not the opportune time to go on a post talking about this pagan. I mean, they're doing what they do. They're in their fellowship time. They're in their joy season. That's not the time for us to do that. Because they don't know. Now, some of y'all doing that, I rebuke you outright openly. And if you don't want to come back, I'll be sad, truly. But I'm going to rebuke you. That's idolatry. That's false worship. What in the world are you doing? You compromising your walk. But that's because Moshe knew the balance. So you can't just think that we're saying love, love, love. Love also has a side that's going to have to what? Show you that review. So Moshe burned, and he asked his brother, what in the world have you done? Continue to read. <clears throat> and our own said, do not let the displeasure of my master burn. You know the, the people that it is in evil. And they said to me, make us mighty ones to, who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us out of the land of Israel, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, Whoever has gold, let them take it off. And they gave it to me, and I threw it in the fire. So now he's basically saying, hey, you know these people. You know they, their heart set on evil. It's wicked. And we know he went up and got the command from the Most High. We know what it also says in the book of Bereshit that said man's heart was evil what? Continually. So, man, you know how these people are, Moshe? I had to give them what they want. No, you're the priest. Yah has appointed you. It's the duty of the priest. But now going back to my original question. How is these things introduced to the people? The priest is not supposed to give the people what they want. The priest is supposed to give the people what Yah wants them to have. So this idolatry did not start in a Christian church. It did not start with Islam. 
it started with whom? Israel. Repeatedly, Israel desires to be what? Like other nations, idolatrous. My reason for going, Mr. McCall, because we need to start looking in the mirror and be very careful with how we're speaking against others, and we need to start learning who we are and who we are the offspring of, the seed of, and making sure we're not doing the same things they were doing. Let's drop that. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 17. Show for team, Judges, chapter 17. And we're going to be starting with verse 1. <clears throat> Judges 17, verse 1. And there was a man from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Miko. And he said to his mother, the 1,100 pieces of silver that were taken from you and on which you put a curse, even saying it in my ears, look, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, blessed of Yah be my son. And he gave back the 1,100. So, so his mother had some silver taken, correct? He's now got the silver back and gave it to his mother. And what did she just say? Blessed of who? Blessed of Yahuwah be my son. Did she say blessed of Baal? Did she say blessed by any name of any pagan god of their day and age? She said, blessed be Yah. Blessed of Yah be my son. Read on. Keep that in mind, Mishmachah. Continue to read. And he gave back the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I had truly set apart the silver from my hand to Yah for my son to make a Hold on. So bless be Yah, or bless of Yah be my son. And now she said, that silver that I had that was taken that you've now returned to me, what did she have it for? She had it for what? Dedication to who? I had this to dedicate to the most high. Did she say by all? Or any false name of some false guy. So in her heart, Miss Baka, in her adore, in her enthusiasm, in her passion, in her desire, she desired to give this as an offering to who? But see, when Israelites read this type of stuff, it's hard for us to see it. Because we're so quick to want to talk about what a Christian church is doing, or what Islam and how everybody's into paganism, or idolatry of some type, and they ain't in the truth. The truth of our history is right before our face to show you that many of us have had a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. And they've established their own righteousness. Why do I say that? She set it up for the Most High. I had this set up for the Most High. Read. Verse 3. And he gave back the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I had truly set apart the silver from my hand to Yah, for my son to make a carved image and a molded image. And now I give it back to you. So I had it to make a carved image and a molded image for Yah. But what does the command say? Thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness in heaven or of or the earth beneath or the waters under, what do you say, Milan? On the waters under the earth, so under the earth, right? So this is an Israelite of ancient times that should know that commandment, as the church still quotes the Ten Commandments, you shall not make any graven image, but does what? Make graven images and bow to graven images. We can always see what the so-called church do, but the church is still Israelites. This is who we are. This is what we've been doing. It's custom. But again, we can we not see that her desire was to who? Her heart was to Yah, so she thought, I had this silver set aside for Yah. It was taken. I cursed whoever took my silver. Thank you, my son. Blessed of Yah be my son who returned this silver. I had this silver to build an image, a molten image for Yah. Thou shalt not make any graven image. But what was her ador or her zeal towards? She went around here calling on Shatan. But what do we always say when people is reading from the same book to have these 
pagan or these terms substituted for the name of the creator, that the rest of the commandment says the same thing. What we want to say? They worship another God. They don't even want to receive the message from you because we don't have enough wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we've been doing this for a very long time before there was ever a Christian church. So what we need to learn how to do is how to go to the people with the truth to lead them away from that. Not with talking down to, but by doing what, what we did today. Go show them what it says in Romans. Yeah, I see you have a zeal and a love towards the most high, which is not according to knowledge. Read the rest of what it said. It said, uh, it said that the Mashiach is the goal of the law for righteousness sake. And Moshe wrote of the righteousness of Torah that the man that do them must live. So what does the status your own righteousness look like? When you're doing something that the Torah does not say. Because Moshe said what? In Torah, that the man that does this, this is the righteousness. The man that does Torah shall live. Are you doing Torah? No. Well, who said this? Paul. Stop lying on Paul. Paul said that Moshe said the man that walks in this Torah shall live. So Paul did not say the law was done away with. That's the people lying on Shaul. Paul quoted from the Torah. He referenced Moshe and he said what? The righteousness that the Mashiach was the goal of is that same righteousness that was written in Torah by Moshe. So then we have to show people that. We have to labor to study the word. As, as, as Adon said, we got an open book. Do we even know how to navigate through an open book to pass an open book test? If you don't know what it says, an open book test ain't going to help you anyway. So you have to know how to navigate through the text, old and new, to be able to show the people that only read from the new, that the new takes you back to the old, and you have to have the old of the Torah in order to live in righteousness, in order to understand the goal of the law that the Mashiach was showing to walk in and what it looks like. Not only the zizis, the fringes, and the phylacteries, but also the heart and the proper ruach. The heart and the proper ruach. And that's why then we go back to what, Moshe? Moshe did what? He plead for the people. He didn't just say, I got my garments on y'all wicked. He plead for the people to the Most High. When the Most High said he was gonna destroy the people. Showing a comparison to the love he had for the people as well as the love that what? Yahusha had for the people, right? This is how we have to navigate through the text to show people their errors without just speaking condescending and negatively towards someone. But we have to understand that, hey, we've been doing this for a very long time. It's in our makeup. But again, can we not clearly see that she desired to serve Yah? She set silver aside to donate to Yah? When they built the golden calf, what did they want to do when they built the golden calf? They brought offerings? To Yah? And Haran said, now tomorrow's going to be a festival. To Yah? None of them said another God that y'all don't know. The high priest and everybody still in the name of Yah establishing idolatry. So do we want to say Aharon was <laughs> serving a false God? Was it? Was Aharon serving a false God? Because he was still the high priest of Israel, right? He got his act together, right? As Yah is bringing us up to get ourselves together. So let us be very careful with how we use these terms to offend others without having an understanding that Israel has been doing this for a very long time. Continue to read. I'll get calling for you yet. Continue to read. Verse 4. <clears throat> and he gave the silver back to his mother, and his mother took 200 pieces of silver and gave them to the silversmith. And he made it into a carved image and a molded image. And they were in the house of Mikahu. Now the man Mika had a house of mighty ones and made a shoulder garment and house idols. And he ordained one of his sons who became his priest. So there's nothing new under the sun. So now, Micah, Mikahu, his mother built the idols for him. Said he was a man who had a house full of idols. And then he did what? Ordained his what? Son to be a priest. Not to be offensive is no different than what's going on in the church today. It's a house full of idols, and they ordain who they want to be priests. Y'all do know that if the priest or the preacher don't talk to the likeness of what the people want to hear, they get rid of them. You can't get rid of a priest of Yah. I 
I remember being in True Light with just myself. I remember being in True Light with just me and Ema Newkirk and her sister. I remember being me, Ema, her sister, Ema, Audrey, and Elder Herman, a couple of other elders. They could not get the people started coming. But whether anybody was here or not, Samantha Tazawa was going to be here. You ain't going to remove me, but you can remove yourself. But the church removes those who are not teaching what they want to hear. I remember being young, hearing young pastors come in there trying to talk about the Sabbath. And as young people, we look at them like, that's the kind of cool pastor there. I can get what he's talking about. And you don't see him again, and you wonder where he's at. They vote him out. <laughs> get rid of him real quick. Let them start talking about a dietary. What? Get rid of them. So back to the text. They did what? They ordained, they appointed, he appointed his own priests. A high school of idols, his mother donated to the cause of building some idols to go into the house, and they believe they serve the most high. And now I want my son to be a priest in the house of Yah, in the house of doggone idols. Continue to read. Verse 6. In those days, there was no sovereign in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Oh, does that sound like something we heard in the brick out of a little bit? Yeah. So here in the Tanakh, it says there was no sovereign, no master, no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. They don't have a zeal of the most high. They don't have the not no, I mean they have the zeal of the most high, but they don't have the knowledge of the most high, so they do what? Go forth to do what? Establish their own righteousness. There's no leadership. There's no authority. There's no real priesthood amongst us right now. But we still believe in the creator. So we're going to worship. So we're going to set up a way of worship. We're going to set up a house of worship. We're going to bring these idols in. And we're going to call on the name of Yah. And my son will be a priest. In my idolatrous house. Continue to read. And there was a young man from Bethlehem in Yehuda. Y'all ready to pay close attention to this. Of the clan of Yehuda. And he was a Levite, and he was sojourning there. And the man went out of the city of Bethlehem in Yehuda to sojourn wherever he could find a place. And he came to the mountains of Ephraim, to the house of Micah. So who was this man? Levite. Huh? He was a Levite. What is a Levite? So he's of the tribe of what? The priests, right? Now he's looking for some place to where? To dwell. Continue to read. Verse 9. And Micah said to him, Where do you come from? And he said to him, I'm a Levite from Bethlehem in Yehuda, and I'm on my way to find a place to sojourn. And Micah said to him, Dwell with me and be a father and a priest to me. And I will give you ten pieces of silver per year, and a suit of garments, and your food. And the Levite went in. So the Levite agreed to dwell with the man. And the young man became like one of his sons to him. Then Micah ordained the Levite, and the young man became his priest. And he was in the house of Micah. Micah said, now I know that Yah does good to me, since I have a Levite as priest. So Micah was like, hey, Shalom Aki. What's your name? Where you from? My Shumka. So the Levite introduced himself. I'm traveling, I'm looking for some place to stay. I'm from the house of Levi. You know what Mika was saying to himself? Hallelujah! What? I just had my mom give me this offering. She done made me some more idols. I done got my shoulder garments and all this, and I got a house full of idols. I just supported my son, but now I can remove my son because I got an official priest. The Most High sent me a priest. Hallelujah! Read the last verse again. And Micah said, now I know that Yah does good to me. I know that. Who does good to me? Yeah. Did he say Shatan? No. Did he say Baal? No. Any of the other names of the pagans that we know of? Who did he say bless them? Yah. Yah, bless me. Y'all see this? Mishpah, I want y'all to know how it looks in your life also. There's things that if you don't know with this open book test or what it looks like, what Yah actually commands and says it's supposed to be, I don't care if it's a Levite, I don't care if it's an Israelite, I don't care if it's a Hebrew with his garb on. If it's not lining up with the Torah, that's not of Yah. We have become such a spiritual people. I'm going to say that again. 
We become such a spiritual people that we have no common sense. What I mean by that? I'm living in the spirit. I'm walking in the spirit. Well, if you're not walking in Torah, what spirit you walking in? I don't care how righteous it looks. I don't care about the coincidence or the sin of Shaitan or whatever it may be. You need to know, open book, if this is right or not. But we take these coincidences that this is a sign from Yah. Negro, you just have a house full of idols. You just ordained your son. Oh, but this is a Levite, so yeah, Yah is with me. Yah sent me a priest. This is an official house of Yah. Why am I going, Mishpah? We talk about the church. Let's stop talking about the church. Let's see how idolatry just, it's not about what religion someone thinks they are proud of. These people actually have a desire to serve the Most High. Let's stop saying they're serving the false one. The problem is the leadership, the preachers, the priests, the elders, whoever's in charge of the institutes are not teaching the truth. But when the people say, I want to change my life, there's not any of us, excuse me, <clears throat> they ever said, I want to go to the house of Baal to change my life. Y'all say what? I want to go alone to God. I, I need to give my life to God. And when you look at whether it's in the Muslim or in the church, they all have thou should I steal and thou should I commit adultery. So Baal and Shatan ain't teaching you that. Baal and Shatan want you to commit adultery. They want you fornicating. They want you stealing. They want you murdering. They want you killing. In Islam, it tells you, just like in the text, it tells if it be possible, be it what? Shalom or peace with what? With all men, if it's possible. But if they come against Allah, and they're trying to introduce you to take you off in sin, then you don't deal with that individual. The same thing, Torah, Torah. The same thing that the Torah already lets us know. We are going to be peaceful individuals, but you're not going to bring sin, and you're not going to cause me to go into sin. But again, if we don't know these things, we don't speak about how what others say, we don't even understand, or we're not even using our mind to be able to see that they're trying to be righteous. So only a righteous Elohim is the one to tell you, thou shalt not kill, steal, commit adultery. Thou shalt not fornicate. Thou shalt not murder. So we have those things in common, and newsflash, we all see the Abraham. We all see the Abraham. There was a question asked earlier, love it when a plan comes together. The question was asked earlier during culture study. Is an Israelite and a Hebrew the same? And we had an answer as a yes and no. No, because a, a Hebrew can be anyone that descends from Abraham. Any descendant of Abraham can be a Hebrew. But every descendant from Abraham is not a what? An Israelite. But now we use the term referring refer to ourselves because not many people in the world today is even referring to Hebrew or Israelite because that's just a done away people. So yes, we can be identified as Hebrews because we are Hebrew also, but we are Israelites, right? So the point that I'm making is, but some of Abraham's other children are what? Still Hebrews. They still learn from that Abba. If you read the records of Abraham, he told his children before he died, when he called all his children, all the nations of his children, not just the ones that come from Yaakov, Yaakov, or Yitzhak. He called all his children and he told them, keep the laws of Yah. Now through the generations, if some of them started doing other things, that's not what their father taught them. He told them to serve Yah. So there's a remnant of the teachings of Abraham in these religions. But we have to tear down the falsehood of all that. That's why we don't do religion. That's why we walk in Torah. We follow the way. But the point I'm making is they're trying to call on the Most High and they just don't know they're being taught wrong. We see here that this man here felt like what? Oh man, the Most High done sent me a priest. I'm, I'm in the will of the Most High. No, you're still out of the will of the Most High. So Mishpachah, please, please, don't just let coincidences and things line themselves up because the word is showing you how it happens. We've done read about a prophet that the Most High told, go give this prophecy, get out of there, don't eat nothing there, get about, don't go, don't stay there, go out this way here. And another prophet came and told him what? Now nah, come on in my house. Yeah, I told him to kill you can have something to eat. And he got killed. We can see here now, when, if you want to be over spiritual, stop thinking you walking in the spirit. You need to walk in this Torah to understand that. Hold up. Man, I got these idols in here. There's a Levite priest. 
It feels spiritual. Let me go back to these commandments again. Thou shalt not make any graven image. Well, maybe this Levi about to come tell me I need to take these images down. Then he can be my priest. Right? But what does this priest do? The priest accepted the money. <laughs> he accepted the title and the duty. And he went right up in the house of idols representing the Most High, supposedly. Why do I want us to understand this, Mishpachai? Don't get so spiritual to the point where, because you have some people that they read the word, they're like, why the Most High don't talk to me like he talked to everybody else? Why? Why don't I have these revelations? That's how some people think. Sometimes you do. You understand the words, so the most I have to talk to you no more clear than that. You know what it says. When it when that discernment comes up in you, and you do what you're supposed to do because the word says it, and then someone comes to something super spiritual, and you're like, but this says this, and this says that, but they say this. But I see the joy in them. That's what's going on in the church today. So we got to understand it still happens over here because we see it happening here. Be Torah spiritual. Not just spiritual for the sake of being what? Spiritual. Make sure that whatever is going on in your life, it lines up with the Torah. All right? Let's continue to read. Chapter 18. Judges 18, verse 1. Shlika, Shlika, Shlika. I just want to share this. I'm not going to go into all details, but I just want to share this with, uh, with, with, uh, with the Mishmachai. So there's been for many years that locally people felt like I don't believe in dreams and things like that. They're like, oh, they don't deal with dreams and stuff up there. No, I know that. Joseph dreamed. We know Daniel could interpret dreams. And the most I speak does through dreams. That's how he speaks to us, right? We believe in that. But did I share with some of the Mishnah Kyle earlier, uh, uh, maybe this week or last week? Listen, it is very hard for Samak Tazawa to receive word from any other soul be spiritual that I don't respect in Yah. I'm just being honest. And if, if, if I need to receive something from somebody, then I pray the most I always let me do it. But you ain't going to be one that's laden in an idolatry, breaking Shabbat, don't keep the feast, cheating on your wife, and y'all told you to tell me anything. Y'all going to talk to me first. That's my belief. I'm just going to maintain in the word. But when a brother or sister that I feel like is in y'all, that I see doing their best to try to live in y'all also, I don't believe they know it all because I don't know it all. I'm still making mistakes. But when I see that desire is to the most high and they're truly trying to walk the walk, I can receive that message. But I do not believe, because of my understanding of the word, that the Most High is going to speak to me through an outright rebellious sinner that don't even love him. Unless it's an emergency situation where I'm like, Most High, unless you tell me right now, and I just happen to be in the midst of all sinners, then the Most High let the sinner stand up and speak, then I'm be like, y'all told me that. <laughs> but it has a lot of with Torah. It's where I'm getting at, Mishmachai. If what you're coming to me with don't line up with Torah, it is hard for me to receive it. Very hard for me to receive it. Now, if there's wisdom within what's being said, because we can also see that in Torah some things happen that were not in the natural. We can see where a son that should not have been in a position of a firstborn has become a firstborn or in the rank of a firstborn. So we do understand things like that can happen sometimes, right? We've seen where brothers put somebody into a pit and then they end up being somewhere to be a blessing. So we know everything does not always happen exactly to the letter of the law. But there's the wisdom of the letter of the law that we should be able to see, like, would y'all tell me to do this or not? Is this having me break a commandment or not? And if it's having me break a commandment, y'all ain't tell me to do it. Oh, this priest happen to come? Priest, you say you accept the job? So the first thing I want you to do is tell me what y'all say. The first thing a priest should have done when he came up in the house is say what? You got to get these idols up out of here. 18, read on. In those days, there was no sovereign in Israel. And in those days, the tribes of the Danites were seeking an inheritance for itself to dwell in. For until that day, all their inheritance among the tribes of Israel had not yet fallen to them. And the children of Dan sent five men to their clan, brave men from Zor and Eshtal, to spy out the land and search it. And they said to them, go search the land. So they went to the mountains of Ephraim to the house of Mika, and spent the night there. When they were near the house of Mika, they recognized the voice of the young Levi, and turned aside, and said to him, who brought you here? What are you doing in this place, and what do you have here? And he said to them, Mika did such and such for me, and he hired me, and I have become his priest. And they said to him, please inquire of Elohim, and we shall know whether the journey on which we are going 
is prosperous. And the priest said to them, go in peace. Your journey on which you go is before Yah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I see you shaking your heads, I can't, Yaquah. I see you shaking your head. So now these Danites come to the house of Mekah, right? And so now they're here, and they see the priest. They know him, so they know he's an official Levite. Like, yeah, this is one of the priests, right? He's a Levite. Hey, what you doing here, Ike? You know, well, look, we we going on a mission. We need to know. We want you to inquire of Yah for us. Read that last verse. When they were near the house of Mika, they recognized the voice. No, 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 no. Verse six. Oh. Oh yeah. And the priest said to them, "Go in peace. Your journey on which you go is before Yah." So who did the priest speak in the name of? Yeah. They said, "Inquire who for us." Inquire of Yah. Did they say inquire of Baal? No. Any false god? No. They in the house of what now? Idols. <laughs> Asking a priest that's supposed to be a priest of Yah, if they're going to be blessed now, he said, go. Yah has you. He spoke to them in the name of the Most High. Did they get there and they see these idols and say, you serve another god we do. That's not what they said. They said he's a Levite. He's a priest. So we're going to ask the priest and the priest Proclaim something to them in the name of what? In the name of the Most High. Continue to read. Then the five men left and came to Leash and saw the people who were in their midst, how they dwelt safely according to the ruling of the Zidonians, at rest and unsuspecting. And no one possessing authority in the land was reproaching for any matter. And they were far from the Zidonians, and they had no word with anyone. And the spies came back to their brothers at Zora and Eshtal, and their brothers said to them, What do you say? And they said, Arise, let us go up against them. For we have seen the land, and look, it is very good. And you sit still, do not hesitate to go to enter and to possess the land. When you go, you are to come to an unsuspecting people, and the land is spacious. Walim has given into your hands a place in which there is no lack of any matter which is on the earth. And 600 men of the clan of the Danites went from there, from Zor and Eshtal, armed for battle. And they went up and encamped in Kiriath Yarim in Yehuda. Therefore they, therefore they called the name of that place Manahik the Dan to this day. See, it is west of Kiriath Yarim. And they passed over from there to the mountains of Ephraim and came to the house of Mekah. And the five men. So let's pause for one second. So we see they said that. Go in, go and take this land, because Elohim is going to be what? Going to be with you. What Elohim are they still speaking about? Yeah. yeah. And they went in the choir of who? A priest. A priest that was in the house of what? Idols. A house of idols, right? Y'all get where I'm going with this still, right? We always want to say that the Christians serving another God. <laughs> but here it is. We have our very own brothers, ancient elders, that's got a house of idols. And these Israelites didn't say, oh, you serve another God in us. They were still asking. They were still proclaiming things in the name of Yah. And they still actually were what? Victorious in their endeavor. Continue to read. Verse 14. And the five men who had gone to spy out the land of Laish answered and said to their brothers, do you know that there are in these houses a shoulder garment and house idols and a carved image and molded image? And now you know what to do. And they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite, man, the house of Mika, and greeted him. And the 600 men armed for battle. So, so, ho, oh, oh. ho, Give me verse 14 again. So now they, they, now they start to see some stuff. And what they say, <laughs> read it again. And the five men who had gone to spout the land of Laish answered and said to their brothers, Do you know that there are in these houses a shoulder garment and house idols and a carved image and a molded image? And now you know what to do. So they said, hey, you know that uh, this house got a whole bunch of idols up in here? This house full of idols at Mika house. Did y'all know that? What he got up in here? In case y'all didn't, yes, full of idols. Now y'all know what to do. What y'all think they're going to do? Huh? What y'all think they're going to do? Somebody already been reading the open book, so somebody knows. <laughs> but what, what, what does somebody else say they're going to do? I remember when I first read it, I said, yeah, they about, to get, they about to be about that life. They about to get them items up out of there. You know, that's the way I took it. I'm like, oh, it's getting good now. Well, let's read a little bit more. Let's read a little bit more. <laughs> I'm thinking they about to rebuke somebody. 
I'm thinking they like, hold up, y'all asked this speech, y'all know that? Did y'all know Idis was in here? They ain't supposed to be up in here. Read. And they turned aside there and came to the house of a young Levite, man, the house of Micah, and greeted him. And the 600 men armed for battle, who of the children of Dan, stood by the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had gone to spy out the land went up. And entering there, they took the carved image and the shoulder garment and the house of idols and the molded image while the priest stood at the entrance of the gate with the 600 men who were armed for battle. And these men, and these went into Micah's house and took the idol and the shoulder garment and the house idols and the molded image. Then the priest said to them, what are you doing? And they said to him, be silent, put your hand over your mouth and come with us and be a father and a priest to us. Is it better for you to be a priest to the household of one man or that you should be, or that you be a priest to a tribe and a clan in Israel? <laughs> and the heart of the priest was glad. Come on, you started grinning, he had to pause. <laughs> he started grinning at that. Go ahead, continue to read, Aki. Verse 20, and the heart of the priest was glad, and he took the shoulder garment and the house idols and the carved image and took his place among the people. And they turned and went and put the little ones and the livestock and the valuables in front of them. They had gone some distance from the house of Micah, when the men who were in the houses near Micah's house gathered together and overtook the children of Dan and called out to the children of Dan. So they turned around and said to Micah, what is the matter? that you have gathered such a company. And he said, you have taken away my mighty ones, which I made and the priests and you are leaving. Now, what more do I have? What is this that you say to me? What is the matter? And the children of Dan said to him, do not let your voice be heard among us. Lest men bitter of being fall upon you and you lose your wife and the lives of your household. And the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his house. Then they took what Micah had made and the priests who had belonged, who had belonged to him and went to Laish, to a people who were at rest and unsuspecting, and struck them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon, and they had no word with anyone. And it was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rahab. And they rebuilt the city and dwelt there. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born to Israel, where previously the name of the city was Laish. And the children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image. And Jonathan, the son of Gersh, the son of Manasseh, and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day the land was taken into exile. And they set up for themselves the carved image of Micah which he had made all the days of the house of Elohim was in Shiloh. Yeah. So what was this at? At the house of Elohim, which was where? In Shiloh, right? These men, when I first read the story for myself years ago, I'm like, yeah, they about to get them. Y'all know they got these items up in here? These brothers wanted the items for themselves also. They took the items, they went to the priest, and they told the priest, would it not be better for you to be a priest over a tribe than one man? So the priest like, this look better. So now we also see this monetary gain too, right? Oh yeah, so the priest got a little joy in his heart. I'm getting a promotion. I'm about to be a priest over a whole bunch of people now. Yeah, I'm a rock with y'all. Thou shall not steal, first of all, regardless if it's idols or not. <laughs> so you're just gonna let them steal, or you're gonna go with them that's now taken from another man's house? Do y'all just see the wickedness that was in our people? So they stole the idols. They went and took it back to the actual house of the Most High. Set up their idols. Set them up to be a priest. So what we see is the fall or the downfall of Micah or Micah's house. Because the Most High judged them for having them idols up in there. Let these wicked brothers come and take them. Now they take them back to the house of the Most High. These Danites take them back to Shiloh. And it said and they were there until the Most High got fed up with them. And then they went into exile from Shiloh. Why are they going to exile? Because of this idolatry. Because of this wickedness. But the point I wanted to see is they were doing all this still in the name of Yah. They thought they were serving Yah. They all had a zeal, an enthusiasm, an adore, a passion, or a desire to the Creator. 
but not according to submission and the knowledge of Torah. And so what we have to be able to do when we're trying to show those who are in these religions that don't line up with Torah, things may seem like they're going good for a time, but y'all coming. You see, Mika thought y'all was with him when he thought the little Levite strolled by. Then some brothers came by, got some advice, went and did what they did, came back and took his house down. And they go back to the house of Elohim and Shiloh, brought the idolatry back, and this little pagan priest that was a Levite himself and got thrown off into exile. But where am I going still, Mishmachai? There's nothing new under the sun. We have to be mindful when we talk to our brothers and sisters that's in these religions and don't just tell them they worship another God. Because when any of us in here see where any of these brothers with all these idols felt that they was worshiping another God, they still thought they was doing everything what? In the name of the Most High. They established their own righteousness. Why? Because they want to be spiritual. We want to be spiritual. Just like today, everybody want to be spiritual. We want to have crystals. We want to burn sage. We want to do all these things. Where the most I say, trust in him and wait patiently on him, pray to him, put your faith in him, pray to him. But I'd rather have a crystal ball, and I'd rather have some sage, and I'd rather do toss rocks. All these different things. I want to try to levitate and gravitate. I want to be spiritual. I'm tapping in. My higher self, my higher energy, my higher being. El El Yon, the most high. There is none higher. There is none greater. His way is the only way. And though people feel like they're elevating and they're being blessed, do we see it through the scriptures? Did not Mika think he was being blessed? These aren't coincidences. But this stuff is written so that we can see what it looks like when Shatan is still involved and we still think we're serving the Most High. The Torah is our instructions. And in the Brit Kadashah, Shalom said that the Messiah was the goal of Torah. And Moshe wrote of the righteousness of the Torah that the man which does these things shall live in them. That's where we put our faith. That's where we put our trust. That's how we know if we're in the house of God or not. We don't need the images. We don't need the idols. We don't need all this other stuff. And we need to stop bashing others who are in ignorance that just don't know because the most high is winking at them in their ignorance. How do we know that? You're here. You know his name now. Some of you have kept your first pass over, your second pass over, your third, your 20th pass over. Hallelujah. But there was a time you was in ignorance going forth, celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter, doing it all in the name of God, the creator, thinking you was pleasing him, have your children doing an Easter speech. But because your desire, you called out to him and you said, Father, show me your way, he pulled you out and showed you the truth. Now you have your children quoting the Shema. You now have your children quoting the Ten Commandments. Studying Hebrew. But it wasn't because somebody came to you and said, y'all are worshiping a false god. We need to stay off social media, always bashing others. Just put the truth out and just be the light. Love your people. Plead for your people. Call out the Elohim. Understand that our people have been doing this forever. The first high priest build a cow, build a go to calf. And from generation to generation, we've seen that Israel has always established their own righteousness, thinking they're calling on Yah while doing what? All this false worship. So yes and no. Yes, sometimes they are called on the false god. There are those that are, are, are in power play, positions. They know they're leading you right to Shatan. They know that. But the sheep themselves, in their heart and their desire, they don't need to hear you tell them they're worshiping a false god. They need you to show them the true Elohim, who they desire to serve. And say, don't just take my word for it, any man's word for it. There's a book. Read your book. It is written. Get the proper understanding. Get for me real quick Leviticus. Um, what I want. There's something else I want to jump. Give me Leviticus 10, 1 through 11 for a moment. Why you cry Leviticus chapter 10, 1 through 11?
Why well, you cry Leviticus 10, verse 1. And the dab and Abihu, the sons of our own, each took his fire horse and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yah, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from Yah and consumed them, and they died before Yah. Then Moshe said to our own, This is what Yah spoke, saying, By those who come near me, let me be set apart. And before all the people, let me be esteemed in our own silent. And Moshe called to Mishael and to Elsaphon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of our own, and said to them, Come near, take your brothers from before the set apart place out of the camp. So we see here that the sons of Aaron, they offered the wrong type incense up to the Most High, right? Doing what? Their own thing. What priesthood was this? The first priesthood, some may say the second, depending on how we're looking at it. We're not focusing on the Melchizedek priesthood right now, so we're going to say the first priesthood for Israel coming out of Mishraim. So the very first priesthood, Aaron already did idolatry. Now Aaron's sons doing what? They all think also. Where do people get this stuff from? Where do people learn this stuff from? What Moshe said in verse 3? Then Moshe said to Aaron, This is what Yah spoke, saying, By those who come near me, let me be set apart. But Moshe said, This is what what? What Yah spoke. This is what Yah spoke. We got to always make sure we're doing what does say of Yah. He said, This is what Yah spoke. Continue to read. By those who come near me, let me be set apart. For those who come near, come by me or near me, let them be set. Let me be set apart. We're supposed to set apart the name of Yah. We're supposed to be the set apart ones, and we're supposed to set apart the name of Yah. Don't associate anything else with Him. Read. And before all the people, let me be esteemed. And before all the people, let who be esteemed? Let Yah be esteemed. Go back to the culture study. So I came with to tell him the eighty third chapter. Most of the time when most people go to the uh, Psalms, the 83rd chapter is to boast what? I'm Israel, and yeah, they're taking crap to counsel against us. But why? Wasn't about just being us. Elder said, what was the purpose or the function of an Israelite? To esteem the name of Yah. They kept us from being a nation. They wanted us to be lost because they were against who? Yah. They were Yah's name to be no more in what? Remembrance. So elders question is, what is the purpose of an Israelite? What is an Israelite? We are supposed to be the ones that set apart the creator's name in the earth. We teach, we proclaim, we set it apart, and we don't associate it with anything or anyone else. Anytime you do that, you're doing a disservice to his name. You're doing a disservice. And I don't care how any man spends it. And it's not personal, I'm just doing my duty. Chakras and all that stuff in the universe, the most high is the creator of the universe. I don't worship the universe. I don't care about the greatness of the universe. I care about the greatness of the creator of the universe. Malak Haolam, the king of the universe. I don't bring him down and reduce him to calling him the universe. We're supposed to set his name apart. We're not associating it with all this stuff. The Torah, his word, the Most High says he does not share his esteem with another or anything, Mishmaka. So while we work, worry about what the Christian church is doing, those are people are actually trying to get close to the Most High the best they know how to. We have these brothers in the Hebrew Israelite community that done got so smart, they done got dumb. Stupid. Foolish, wicked, lined up for Sheol. Yep. And this little bowling out of the most high, one day gonna come, he's gonna roll that strike and knock them all down. The same way Mika house got knocked down, the same way people got put out of Shiloh, because what? They took them idols back there. You start associating idols with the most high, your house gonna soon crumble. We're supposed to esteem the name of the creator. Continue to read. Verse 5. So they came near and took, took them by their long shirts out of the camp, as Moshe had said. Moshe said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons, do not unbind your heads nor tear your garments, lest you die and wrath come upon all the people. 
But let your brothers, all the house of Israel, be well the burning with Jah's kindled. And do not go out from the door, the tent of appointment, lest you die for the anointing oil of Yah's upon you. And they did according to the word of Moshe. And Yah speaking to our own saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink. You nor your sons with you when you go into the tent of appointment, lest you die a law forever throughout your generations. So as to make a distinction between the set apart and profane and between the unclean and the clean. Give me one more verse. And to teach the children of Israel all the laws which Yah has spoken to them by the hand of Moshe. So what did he say? Y'all, this is what most I said. Esteem my name, esteem me, set me apart before the people. Here's what you do as the priest. Don't mess up in your priesthood duties, because if you do so, you're going to be put to death. I've anointed you with oil. What you're supposed to do is do what? Make a distinction between the clean and the unclean. You are to teach the people the Torah. We want to teach them everything else. We want to teach them science. We don't knock science. Science right here trying to prove God. No, God proves science. That's the problem. You got everybody don't want to believe in the creator. They want to believe in science. There wouldn't be no science without being a creator to have for us to be here. And I'm not a scientist, but it just still don't make sense to me that we can just exist from nothing and that gas can come together and explode and we all just here live and a woman can take a baby into her womb for all those months and the fact that her tube, the fallopian tube is cooked to the baby, the baby's in water in the womb of a woman. She can breathe or he can breathe within the womb of his mother. She can eat or he can eat through the connection of being in the womb of the mother. Starts to grow and mature in the womb of a mother. Comes out crying from the womb of the mother. The tube is now cut, now it's gonna start breathing on its own and eating on its own from an explosion? Makes sense, don't it? Yeah. Really makes sense. We see car accidents happen all the time. We see fire catch and people running for their life, hoping they can get out of the car before it blow up. But we want to talk about science. We want to talk about everything else associated with the Most High instead of the Most High himself. They're trying to prove he don't exist, but he is the creator of existence. And no scientist can ever make sense of how can you make sense of something that was here before you anyway? without some instructions. And then we start reading the writers and the recordings. Me and my Isha was talking about this. Really just think about it, right? So the first man came and they was walking and there was no cars and none of this stuff. But how do they just really learn how to create all this other stuff that we now have? How are we talking to people online with this technology? There is a higher power or higher being that is giving us the ability to do such. The same way we read about the Mosai, and he told them to build him an altar. He told him to build the Mishkan. He told Moshe in the book of Shemot, I'm sending you this man and these men who I've given the wisdom to know how to do. The Most High blesses people with the ability, the skill set, and the mindset to do certain things. But man can't do this of his own self. And no explosion creates anything and make it smart. Let me get back to the text. And Moshe said to Aaron, Shiga, go back to the last two verses that you reckon I got. Verse 10, so as to make the distinction between the set apart and the profane and between the unclean and the clean. So the priest is supposed to do what? Make a difference, a distinction between the set apart and the unclean. Give me the next one, Naki. And to teach the children of Israel all the laws which I have spoken to them by the hand of Moshe. That's the Savior. Teach the people this. Teach the people this. We don't even know enough Torah, but we want to dibble and dab and everything else. Teach the people my words. Teach the people what set apart actually looks like. This is what you teach. And this is all throughout. And we've done covered when they came out of captivity from captivity, what were they doing? Finding the Torah and trying to return to Torah. Anything else is a distraction. 
And we need to make distinction between the word of Yah and the distractions that's trying to lead our people away into falsehood. In the name of Yah. Why are we going to still? Because there's still people that will be proclaiming Yah on everything that Yah has nothing to do with. Yah has not commanded us to teach. So, Mishpachah, let's jump to the book of Telim. This is going to be the last chapter. Telim 78. Give me about verse 1 through... I think it's about one through eight. Tell him a Psalm 78, one through eight. Tell him Psalms, chapter 78, verse one. My people give ear to my Torah, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So what he said, my people, Give your ear to my Torah, to my instructions. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Read. I open my mouth in a parable. I utter riddles of old, which we have heard and known, for our fathers have related them to us. We do not hide them from their children, relating to the generation to come the praises of Yah and his strength and his wonders, which he has done. For he has raised the witness in Yaakov and set a Torah in Israel, which he commands our fathers to teach them to their children. So what did we just read that the priest was supposed to do? Make a distinction between what is set apart and not set apart, that which is holy, not holy, that which is unclean and clean, and teach it to the people. Now he said, my people give ear to my Torah, incline your ears to my words. Now give me that last verse again, Kanaka. Did you just read? We have raised the witness of Yaakov and set a Torah in Israel. For he's read or raised the witness in Yaakov and set a Torah in Israel. Read. Which he commanded our fathers to teach them to their children. So what should the father be teaching their children? Where should the father have learned Torah from? His father. Where should his father have learned it from? His father. Where did his father should have learned it from? His father. And there's a priesthood that's going to be teaching the nation so that these fathers can go and teach their children these commandments in Israel. But what's the problem? We go into the houses that's supposed to be of Elohim or God and people not teaching Torah. They're not teaching the witness that the Most High left for them to teach. Continue to read, okay. That it might be known to a generation to come, to children who would be born to rise That it up. might be known to who? Generations to come, children that have not yet been born, but we hear what? The laws are done away with. You teach this so that the generation that's not even here will be able to have this Torah. Continue to read. To rise up and relate them to their children and place their trust in their lean and forget not the works of El. To rise up and to do what? Instruct the place in their children that they would know how to raise up, to be raised up to what? Love and put their trust in Elohim. Read. But watch over his commands and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. And that they may, this generation may do what? Raise up, trust in Elohim, keep his commands, but they don't do after the generation of their stubborn fathers who rebelled against the commands of the Most High. Continue to read. A generation which is not prepare its heart, whose spirit was not steadfast to us. A generation which did not prepare its heart, whose ruach or spirit was not steadfast in Elohim. Mishpachah, we have to prepare our hearts to seek Elohim. We have to prepare our hearts to desire the word of Elohim. We have to prepare our hearts to be ready to change when the Most High shows us the errors of our ways. So again, to our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, our brothers and sisters in Islam, our brothers and sisters in Israel, our brothers that believe in Mashiach, our brothers that don't believe in Mashiach, our brothers just out there lost, period, they have no belief. We have to put our trust in Elohim. And he has a way that is written that we all must keep. We cannot keep establishing and doing our own ways and our own righteousness. We must submit unto his way and love him and trust him. He says we cannot continue after the stubbornness and the rebellion of our forefathers who did not stay steadfast in him. You have to prepare your heart to receive the word of Elohim. Why do you have to prepare your heart? There's going to be things that you're going to find out about yourself that you're not going to like about yourself. 
Or if you like those things about yourself, you're not going to like what Yah says about you and yourself, so therefore you're going to want to what? Rebel or reject the word of the Most High. But if you prepare your heart, that the part about yourself that you like about yourself, that you find out that Yah said, you ugly, you wicked, you idolatrous, then you have to then what? Be willing to repent or change. That's preparing your heart. What didn't the forefathers want to do? They didn't prepare their hearts. They brought Egypt with them. They brought the idols with them. So why is it that our brothers and sisters still today have the idols in the churches? That's what Israel always did. We've always been like that. We keep bringing the idols. Not all Israel, but a lot of Israel. Mishmachah. There are those that try to be set apart, and then there are those that think they are set apart while bringing the paganism or the heathen cultures with them. Let's drop down to about verse 52. Drop it down to 52, and I'm about to get to the close. Then he made his own people go forth like sheep and led them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely, and they did not fear, but the sea covered their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his set-apart place, this mountain which his right hand had gained, and drove out nations before them, and allotted them a measured inheritance, and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. Yet they tried and rebelled against the Most High Lean, and did not guard his witnesses. But they turned back and acted treacherously like their fathers. So early he told us that we make sure we keep those witnesses and we keep his commandments, right? So now he's reflecting like he did all this stuff for them. He delivered them. But he said, yet they tried and rebelled against the Most High Elohim and did not guard his witnesses. So they didn't want to keep the testimonies of the Most High. They didn't want to do the things of the Most High. Read. They twisted like a treacherous boat, for they enraged him with their high places. And moved into jealousy with their carved images. When Elim heard this, he was wroth and greatly despised Israel. So why did Micah's house get taken down? Why did the Danites cause them to be exiled out of Shiloh? But they turned back and acted treacherously like their fathers. They twisted like a treacherous bow, for they enraged him with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. Make no graven images. They still call it on the Most High and got images, idols. Read. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Read on, Aki. When Elim heard this, he was wroth and greatly despised Israel, and he left the dwelling place of Shiloh, the tent which he had so, set so, up. So, so what did you say? Read that again. And he left the dwelling place of Shiloh. Who left the dwelling place of Shiloh? Why did he leave the dwelling place of Shiloh? Because the idols they brought in. It ain't that they ran the Most High out. Because nobody can't run the Most High from where the Most High is at. The Most High chose to leave us. This was the dwelling place where y'all could come to for safety. This was a place that was established for y'all. And y'all brought images and idols. And still think y'all proclaiming my name. So what did he say here again, Kanakia? And he left the dwelling place of Shiloh, the tent which he had set up among men. But it said he greatly what though? Give me that part, but he oh. greatly something. When Elohim heard this, he was wroth and greatly despised Israel. So when Elohim heard this, he was wroth and greatly despised Israel. Now you can go ahead. And he left the dwelling place of Shiloh, the <clears throat> tent which he had set up among men. And he gave his strength into captivity and his comeliness into the hand of the adversary. And he gave his what into captivity? He gave his strength into captivity. Love when a plan comes together. Zakane said, what is Israel? Who is Israel? What is the function, the purpose of Israel? What did he give into captivity? Strength. So what was Israel? His strength. Israel was the strength of who? Yah. The strength of Yah. Yisrael, Prince of Power, Prince of Elohim. Y'all are my strong people. Y'all are my priests. I'm giving y'all over. Ain't nobody strong enough to take Israel down except y'all. I established y'all. But since y'all didn't want the establishment that I gave y'all, y'all didn't want y'all benefits, y'all ain't appreciated, I gave y'all over into captivity for bringing these idols up to Shiloh, for bringing these idols to my dwelling place. Read. 
and he gave his people over to the swords. And he was wroth with his inheritance. His young men were consumed by fire, and his maidens were not praised. His priests fell by the sword, and their widows could not weep. Then Yah awoke as one asleep, as a mighty man who shouts because of wine. And he struck his adversaries backward. He put them to an everlasting reproach. He struck his adversaries backward. So we read all these other things. The priests not going to be killing, getting killed. Their wives can't even mourn for him. He said he swept his adversaries backwards. Who's the adversaries? Who are the shatans? At this point, Israel. Say it, say it boldly. At this point, Israel. At this point, who? Israel. But Israel, we always want to talk about the church. <laughs> We always want to talk about the church. We need to be talking about Israel. We need to be talking to Israel. Israel, you have become enemies to the most high. We've become enemies to the most high. That is the reason why we're in the condition that we're in. Continue to read. Verse 67. Then he rejected the tent of Yosef and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. But chose the tribe of Yehuda, Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built a set apart place like the heights, like the earth, he founded it forever. He chose Dawid the servant and took him from the sheepfolds. He brought him in from tending the ewes to shepherd Yaakov, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. And he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and led them by the skill of his hands. Hallelujah. So, uh, as we can see, but he ended up establishing King uh, Malek Dawid. So he brought him from the sheepfold, from watching over the ewe lambs, meaning he was a little shepherd boy. But the Most High established him to be the king over Israel, to be the shepherd under Israel, to lead them back to who? To lead them back to him. What does a shepherd do for the sheep? Lead them to green pastures. Lead them by the still waters. King Malek Dawid led them back to the Most High God, right? And that's what shepherds are supposed to do today. But Israel, so what we have to understand is if we are a nation of priests, then a nation of priests should be doing what? Trying to lead the sheep of the Most High wherever they're scattered. Whatever religion, whatever doctrine they may be in, we don't need to just talk down to them. We need to understand where these doctrines come from. We need to understand how long it's been going on that there's been people thinking that they're serving the living power while worshiping them falsely by establishing their own righteousness. We need to learn how to go amongst them to bring them to the light. We need to go amongst them and be the light that's in the darkness. We need to show them the distinction between clean and unclean, what is actually set apart and what is not. We need to actually show them, thus says the word of the Most High. Thus is what the mouth of Yah has said. This is what Yah has spoken. This is what Yah requires. Yah said, with all that getting, get understanding. Do you understand the Torah yet? If not, why are we wanting to go into science? Do you understand how to love your neighbor yet? If you don't know how to love your neighbor yet, why are you right here trying to come with, I can elevate? Do you know how to teach the difference between clean and unclean dietary needs? But you can tell me what type of posture I can do to heal myself? When the most I tell me what and what not to eat? Teach the words of Elohim, our creator. In closing, Mishpachah, I'm just going to get one more verse. Just to go to what we was going to last week. Let's jump to the Brick Kadashah, to the book of John. John chapter 9, I only want one verse. So last week we was covering that the elders went to petition or the inquire of Yah, but the most I said, I would not hear of you. And why would he hear of them? Because of the false ways of worship was the reason why he wouldn't hear of them because of the idolatry, because of how they wasn't caring for the widows and, and their brothers, just that the, they weren't keeping Torah. So the fact that they wasn't keeping Torah, the most I said, oh, so now you want to inquire of me, but yet you're not keeping my commands? I just want to give uh, uh, one script to show when the most I does listen to his people. Go to uh, Yahugadon, John chapter 9, and just give me uh, verse 31. Yahugadon, John 9, verse 31. And we know that Elohim does not hear sinners, 
But if anyone fears Elohim and does his desire, he hears him. You no, know, Elohim does not hear sinners. This is in the brick kind of shot. I want to go in for a reason because I don't want people to think we don't we can't pull the stuff in the brick out of shot. But I can show you all throughout this night where the most I said the prayers of a sinner is an abomination, and he does not hear the prayers of a sinner. So now in the brick out of shot, give me that verse one last time, my key. And we know that Elohim does not hear sinners. Elohim does not hear sinners. Now we know this. This is New Testament writing, which meant that these men in the New Testament understood what sin was. Sin is a what? Transgression of the law. Transgression of Torah. That's what a sin sinner is. One who transgresses Torah. So they're in no way speaking against Torah. And they're saying what? The Most High does not hear sinners. Continue to read that. But if anyone fears Elohim and does his desire. But if anyone fears Elohim and does his desires. He hears him. He hears him. So we read last week. Oh, y'all inquire of me. Y'all asking of me, oh Israel, who don't listen to me, who don't fear me, who don't reference me in spirit and in truth. And as more Hanny I brought out, but even though the most I said that to them, he was still giving them the answer within his answer. I'm not listening to y'all because y'all don't fear me. You've not done what I told you to do. Which should basically tell us what? Start doing what he tells us to do, and maybe he will listen to us. So I just want to close that this week with going here. Most High does not hear the sinners, but those that fear him and reference him and is trying to live by his ways, he hears. He answers. So Mishpachah, we need to make sure that we know who we're calling on. Not just because we're saying the name of Yah, but it's the way of worship, the way we're living, the commandments we're keeping. Are they the commandments of the Most High? Are they the commandments of man or the adversary through man? With that, Mr. McCall, I pray and hope everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the lesson on the day. But it's time for us to come out of the judgmental, ruach, and spirit and start doing the function of a true Israelite. We are servants and witnesses of the Most High. It is time that we be a light unto the nations, but first and foremost, it's time for us to be a light to Israel. Our brothers and sisters are scattered in whatever houses of worship that they may be in. We need to go to them with the spirit of meekness, kindness, humility, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and more so with the spirit of righteousness. With that, I give all honor, all esteem unto the Most High. May his name be esteemed. May we set apart his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise him. At this time, I open the floor to the elders, starting with the Imams first. Um, as always, the cultural study, the two-minute warning, and the message were told. Um, as I was thinking about the culture study, I was asking myself, how did we get so far removed from being the people that Abba desires us to be? It's all in the Word, and once we know it, we need to be witnesses. We need to be better witnesses. And we need to be esteeming y'all's name instead of condemning and judging other people like your message brought, your yeah. message brought to us. And then a two-minute warning. Oh, my goodness gracious. When I think about the open book exams that we had in school, <laughs> you would think that you would ace them, but right. you didn't always ace them. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so difficult for us when we have all the answers? We have to ask ourselves that. And again, it's all in the book. However, we need to can't remember this. we need to be doing more. We need to be reading more. And we need to study to show ourselves approved. And then we need to be applying it. Applying us. It has yeah. to be applied. And praise Abba, getting to the message. Praise Abba that he delivered us from out of false doctrine. However, we should always remember that there was a time when we were ignorant to the truth and we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we need to show mercy when we run across folk who don't yet know the truth. Because we don't know when the Father will bring them in the truth, just like he did us. Hallelujah. So, told word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told her, you know, I told her for your word. Praise the Lord. Praise the 
Hallelujah. I thank and praise y'all. I tell you, it was getting me. Praise y'all. Praise, praise y'all. I praise y'all. The open book. I thank you for the culture letting us know, reminding us who we are. Mm -hmm. And the open book test, and you know, a lot of open book tests, they give you chances to take the test mm -hmm. and know about the open book test to study the book. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't study the book right. with the open book right. test. <laughs> <laughs> And so now we know we have to really study this book and apply it to our lives. And so that we will not be judgmental to the Christian folks. Tob, 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 listen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I told her, 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 I told her. my Shoshana. Hallelujah, I just sum it all up. We are under covenant with Yahuwah. We are in an open book journey. And we have to study to show ourselves approved to be the witness that Yah set us up to be. I yield. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. I told Yah. I told Yah for your words. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, elders, if y'all have any words. Um, okay. More Hanny, I know uh, generally, uh, as I can't, Yah I'll try to yield you first. So if you have any words to do, the floor is open to you first. Long, Ms. Bukai, Shabbat Shalom. Um, Ema, I love you first and foremost. Um, Adon, I can't say enough about the lesson part. It's, it, it's crucial for us to understand, to be reminded of how we go left and how we forget to look in the mirror to remember who we are and where we came from. Like, and if we do that on a daily basis, or if we even try to look at those in other religions or other practices or whatever that you may think that they're doing, if you don't look at them as yourself, it's over. Mm -hmm. Because you don't see Yah's mercy on you. Or you don't recognize his compassion and mercy he did by calling you over he could just leave you in your ignorance he didn't have to have lights in this world but he did give us lights and that's the most important thing like we need to know what you said at the end that last part was crucial it's about being a servant but we don't recognize that that is what our creator is his first thing he serves us he created a home for us he showed you what a servant's supposed to look like he shows you what mercy is supposed to look like. He shows you what compassion is like. He, even when he puts us away and said, I'm not going to do this forever. At some point, I'm going to remember my, my love for my covenant with my, you know, and tells us that, you know, I'm going to punish you, but I'm just not going to, you know what I'm saying, end it for you. And that's so great. And then one more other thing I wanted to bring out that I just want to share with the Mishmaqah is this. How do you esteem the name of Yah? You esteem the name of Yah, you keep Sabbath. You keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You have compassion on those that are, that are unfortunate. You show mercy. This is how you esteem the name of Yah. It's not about actually saying Yah or saying his name every day. Oh, Yah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm screaming y'all name. You're screaming his name in a song and everything. That is praise and worship. We understand that. But esteem is your name. Esteeming the name of Yah is your actions of how you carry yourself because that's what Israel was supposed to do. Carry themselves in a certain way, do a certain things, and then others would see and say what type of power, what type of Elohim is this that are close to the people that give them this? So it's the, the actions that esteem his name. And that's all I wanted to share with everybody. That was so powerful, a powerful lesson. But I want to encourage everybody, the way to esteem his name is service, is service. So hallelujah, miss everybody. I'll see, be home soon again, a couple of weeks. Hallelujah, don't. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told her for your words, you're gone. I told her for your words. Hallelujah. The words of wisdom. Praise Abba. Praise Abba.
Zakay and Yaqua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, powerful, powerful message, uh, Moray again. And, and um, what stood out to me in, in, in this lesson through it all, you know, is, is we have a problem with going about establishing our own righteousness, you know, instead of studying to show ourselves approved, like this open book test, hallelujah. We're, 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 we're rewriting the test for ourselves. You know what I mean? It, it, we're establishing our own righteousness. And, and like um, in, in Romans, where, where Paul has said, Moshe told us. <laughs> I mean, in, in Paul's time, they were separated by Hellenism and all of that stuff. They were separated from, from the heritage and culture. And then Paul is trying to tell, look, man, Moshe has, 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 has already told you what the most high is, what the most high is looking for you to be acceptable to him, righteousness. That that's regardless of what everybody else is saying, um, this is what you need to know. <laughs> you know, and, and then um, as you were closing out uh in, in Psalms uh 78, you know, it says we we those of us that 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 the most high blessed and had mercy enough to pull us out of darkness we need to figure out torah <laughs> you asked that uh you asked that question you know um we we need to figure out torah and i'm just going to relay this there, there's a uh, a friend of mine who is um quote unquote christian and you know y'all have heard the story y'all have heard the, the saying before like Bible thumper and stuff like that. He 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 reads the Bible, <laughs> you know. And he and I have have discussions all the time. And and when you pose, this is my experience. When I pose a question to him, and he doesn't have the scriptural answer, uh, where he can't go to it in scripture, then it's something that we are not supposed to understand. It's it's, it's a it's a mystery of the Most High that we 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 can't understand. But the truth of the matter is, if it's in, if it's written a four time, we are supposed to understand it, and we're supposed to keep searching until we understand it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what what Psalm seventy eight is saying. Y'all, you you got to understand this because you're the flame keepers of the next generation. You got to pass this on to the next generation so that their crafty counsel cannot wipe out the name of Israel and cannot wipe out uh, the majesty and the glory and the, and and uh, the sovereignty of the Most High Yah. So, so told, told, powerful messages. A lot in there that we we got to have ears to hear it. That, that told, told me old and powerful message, Maury Sama. Hallelujah. 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 All praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High. Total for your words, I came. Total for your words. Um, and I just want to read uh, uh, two comments real quick before we get ready to close out with Tefla. Um, and it was, uh, it was posted during the time when Maury Haney, I was speaking, and this kind of goes hand in hand with Maury Haney, I was saying, he was like, how do you esteem the name of Yah? It's not just saying halal Yah. It's not just, you know, how you dress and things like that. It's, it's about what you do. It's your compassion, your love, your, all those things that he said. So I want to read this message from um, Adon Eleazar. He said, one thing that jumped out to me when you said about the others, uh, hold up. One thing that jumped out to me when you said about what others see and how we are perceived through our tone, approach, and application of the Most High's ways, when we are planting seeds to others, was this. Are our tassels ones that others want to take hold of? Not just based off what they see, but what they see, but, but by what they see. Then he gave Zechariah 8 and 23, Matthews 9 and 20, Matthews 14 and 36. So he's speaking of the actual physical tassels, but you know, he actually not taking it to the spiritual sense. Are they seeing the tassel of your lifestyle? Or do they want to take hold to it? You know, the tassel ought to be something they want to take hold to, because they feel like there's some deliverance there. There's some um, some shalom or some peace there. So are we actually uh, representing the most high properly with our fringes and do uh, people see our lifestyle as being something they want to grab hold to so that i thought that went hand in hand with maury Haney. i was saying at the time when he was saying it because how do you esteem the name of Yah? it's not just saying hallelujah it's about how you live your life righteously before the most high your compassion your love for thy neighbor those that are lost 
all those things. Um, and so then uh, Batzion um, responded to E's uh, comment, and she said, Cain, and the tassels uh, represent our keeping the commands. So when they take hold of our fringes, they are grasping our culture, which is Torah, which brings life and shalom. Hallelujah. That's what they're supposed to be grabbing hold to. Not literally just, I want to grab your fringes, but I want to grab hold to you because Yah's with you. Like the righteousness of Elohim is with you. I'll be blessed to grab hold to this. I have healing being amongst you. Like, teach me, lead me, show me the way. That's when they grab hold to the fringe. Not just literally just, I want to grab your fringe. Like, what is that? Gonna do? Just hold on to your fringe, pull off any of your Like, no, they they want, they they must desire to grab hold because of the ruach that you are displaying and then Yah being shown through you. So all praise, all honor, all esteem to the most high. That's the season that we're in as a Knesset. And I hope that the rest of Israel is starting to hear and receive also from the most high. Stop. It's time for Israel to stop being so boastful and so proud and bragging about being Israelites and understand we are servants of Yah. We are servants of Yah. And as I can, Yaakov said, like, uh, Yah served, no, uh, like more Hanny, I said, Yah was a servant first. He showed us how to serve. He provided us everything, gave us everything, took care of us, washed us, cleansed us, fed us. He did everything for us. So now we in the earth, we're supposed to be doing the same thing for our brothers and sisters. So with that, man, I tell you all praise, all honor, all esteem be to the most high. May he continue to lead us. And may not only the words that we're receiving, that we're receiving in our hearts, but we receive them in our hearts and we start producing the works and the action that Yah's placing within our hearts. We really see that we are uh, brothers and sisters of men and women that are truly servants of the most high Yah by what we're producing. So toda Yah, toda Yah. I now yield the floor. First to Ima Audrey with her announcements. I didn't forget you that you that cut you off guard. <laughs> hey, Zach, I wish you could have seen her face. She's like, Whoop, me? Like, yeah, now nah, she she's so used to me forgetting. So uh, to 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 Ima. And then after Ima, we yield the floor to Sarya Hanan uh for the closing Teflon. To everyone that tune in, uh may the most high watch over bless and protect each of you. Thank you for tuning in with us on this Shabbat. Ima, the floor is yielded to you. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakar. The Cash app and the Zelle information will be placed in Telegram as usual for those desiring to contribute tithes and offerings or to our Helping Hand Ministry. Toda, Ahab, and Shalom. You see, I turned that camera around, Adon. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she looks amazing too. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Sorry, Yohanan. I yield the floor to you, Adon. Okay, Adon. Uh, before we get to Tesla, one quick announcement. I uh, put out the telegram this week, the dates for Shavo, so y'all can start putting your time off or uh, location to be announced. We'll get that to y'all shortly. Uh, if you have any questions, contact myself, Maurice Shamak, and Zakan Yaqua. All right. Oh, mine's are clear. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. To our Abba, Yahuwah Elohim, Zavarok, El Shaddai, El Elyon. You want to say, Toda Yah. Told our Yah, told our Yah for your Shabbat, Abba. And Abba, I pray that you accept our thanks today for all you allowed us to learn and to receive from you, Abba. Help us, your children, for the full cause of earth, Abba, to follow your Torah, Abba, with a right, Rugat, with a right spirit, Abba. And with true understanding, Abba, protect us from evil, Abba, for all the works of the adversary, Abba, that's tried to attack us through the weak, Abba. In our generation, Abba, may we experience your rulership and your wonders, Abba. And in your set-apart name, we pray, Abba, reveal yourself with power, and may your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, Abba. That all may realize that 
We are on your hands, your mighty hands, the mighty hands of Yah. And that's your will to set to be everything right in our lives, Abba. Let your will be done in our lives, Abba. Now with our will, your will, Abba. And let our will be a card with your will, Abba. Be with us, Abba. Bless and strengthen us, Abba. For all the work entrusted in you, Abba. We trust in you, Abba. We bless you, Abba. We esteem you, Abba. We set apart your name, Abba. We esteem your set apart name, Abba. We cry out to you, Abba. You are our strength, our strong tower, our Elohim, our savior, our protector, Abba. We just ask for your continued protection, Abba, in our daily lives, Abba. When we go on to these jobs, when our children go out to these schools, Abba, being surrounded by wickedness, Abba, that's not a you, Abba. And Abba, I pray, no matter your children from the four corners of the earth, no matter what religion they're in, Abba, to destroy them idols, Abba. And come back to you, I, O Elohim, Almighty Yah. To open our eyes of these pastors, of these leaders of these different religions, Abba. That they could start teaching your children, your truth, your Torah, our culture, our true culture, Abba. And not the culture of Shatan, Abba, who tries to lead us astray from you, Abba. Abba, it's time, Abba, to put away that Martin calf, Abba. Put away them idols and them images, Abba. And get back to our culture. Get back to our way of life, Abba. Get back to our foundation, Abba. Get back to our hedge of protection, Abba. Which all sum up to you, Abba. May you bless us, Abba, and keep us. May you make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may you lift up your confidence upon us and give us shalom, Abba, throughout this earth until every day of our lives until you take us away, Abba. We love you. We serve you. We honor you. We praise and esteem your set apart name. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name of your Elohim. And blessed will come in the name of your Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Right, enjoyed fellowship with you all today. May the most I watch over, bless and protect you. May he give you. Yeah. Told I told I Cote. Hello, yeah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.